The last time we were here, or that I was recording a session for this series, we learned that we were a casualty of the trade deadline. But I also found out at the end of that episode, the last episode that was recorded, that the reason we were a trade deadline casualty, if you want to consider me that, it's because Winnipeg needed a goaltender. They have an injury right now. Alex Lyon is injured and unable to play for the foreseeable future. I am in tandem, I think, with Darcy Kemper. I think it was Kemper that's here. But he's not playing in net in this game. We're playing the Arizona Coyotes. So without further ado, let's sim the first period of play as I get you caught up. Barrett Hayton scores. Don't be Hayton. He scores from the middle of the ice surface near the blue line. Second period of play. And we've evened it up at one. So I got a lot to play for in this game. Line score and a good save percentage and a victory. And remember, we are trying to carry the Winnipeg Jets to a playoff spot. So this is my second game as a Winnipeg Jet, I think. And I am also recording again on a different microphone. This time, it is a Shure SM58, which is a dynamic microphone. Sounds totally different to the condenser microphones I've used before. I do want to say, I knew this was going to happen with the pencil condenser that I was using. Oh my god, that definitely is a nutsack save if there ever was one, and we're going to cover it. Oh my, I mean, putting the boys in the line of fire. That better be, legitimately better be a top-tier jockstrap, goaltender cup, whatever it is. I mean, basically, if, if you don't know this, NHL goaltenders, they wear like two, sometimes three cups to protect their junk and my guy might want to be wearing three at a minimum that was a slapper to the groin i don't know if the plan tonight was to come into the game and and get castrated but that's certainly not how i would do it depending on how the winnipeg jets play for the remainder of the season i might want to castrate get castrated god i do want to get castrated now <laughs> what an unfortunate goal off of the rebound. You know what's funny is I just kind of watched that rebound happen. Big, big rebound. You know what's awful as well? There was so much time to recover, but he's, look at him, he's hardly moving at all. Oh yeah, let's stack the pads. That's going to work. It's fine. It's, it's not the end of the world right now. It's just one goal in, in intervened gameplay. So I was trying to carry on about microphones or something like that before we made a nutsack save and then got scored on after trying to stack the pads oh my god if you don't score on this uh anyway so dynamic microphone sounds a little bit different i'm gonna try to eq this one because it it is a little you know the mids are a little bit high in my opinion on this one gonna try to make it sound as good as possible that's a save that's as good as possible could have used that on clayton keller a few moments ago, I wasn't sure if we were going to get the puck out. So, that's Kaprizov wearing 97, not Connor McDavid, who is in Vegas. Which is probably where I need to sign if I get the opportunity to. So anyway, I was noticing with the condenser microphone that I was using before, that the plosives were a little loud. And what is a plosive, you might ask? Well, it's where they're, when you speak into a microphone, depending on the microphone type, and you say a P or a B, sometimes those plosives are exaggerated by the microphone in the sound of a loud, bassy thump. That's the best way I can describe it. If you don't know what it is, you can just Google it if you want to know specifically what that is, or even maybe find a YouTube video example of a plosive. But they were a little too extreme in the last couple of episodes, so I've tried to cut down on that by using this dynamic microphone. I didn't have this problem with the large diaphragm condenser microphone that much of this series has been recorded on. And how do you miss the net, Dvorak? There are ways around it. You just, you need to put a filter on the microphone that prevents that, those specific frequencies from reaching or affecting the microphone as it is deflected out of play. Either way, I don't, I don't think it matters if I go on too much about what microphone's being used. As long as it works and the audio quality is at least optimal that's the only thing that i care about but microphones still do matter in a variety of ways that 
some people who watch this video may not fully comprehend or even care about for that matter. As long as it's not being recorded through a laptop microphone, which has happened to me on accident a couple of times recording videos for this channel. And that's a tripping penalty. That is a tripping penalty. I'm going to go off to La La Land. It's probably where I deserve to be based on how I played much of this season. Can I please get on the bench? We're, we're now four seasons deep into this, almost at the end of season four. I'm sorry it's taken this long to get to the end of season four. You're telling me I could have played that. Well, I'll block you. Nope, don't touch my teammates. We are basically to the end of season four, about to start season five soon, and I haven't even touched the ice for a playoff game in this series yet. By season four last year, we were contending for the Stanley Cup, and I was playing those games. Oh, we got another penalty going on. I didn't see it happen. I'm off to La La Land again. I don't even need to go anywhere. We scored a goal as I was skating toward the bench. That's I, I didn't even think about how much time was left in the game. They were probably pulling me for the extra attacker. That's what that was. And then they scored on the power play with the goaltender on his way to the bench to get the extra attacker. So unless I fumble this really badly, which will probably still happen, this game should be going to overtime. I don't want to speak too soon. Game, don't listen to me. I didn't say anything about overtime. Matthews, and I think I got a piece of that, which keeps it out of the back of the net, and overtime is almost a certainty at this point, unless Kirill Kaprizov can do anything about it. The goalie's down and out. Oh, it gets through. There is a Gunther in pain, I think. Just win this game. Win the game at all costs. Hopefully the teammates can go out there and do that in overtime. We got Kaprizov, so I think that odds are probably in our favor to finish this one off in overtime, but not if Casey DeSmith has anything to say about that with the glove save. Oh, no. Oh, no. Double no. We took a penalty, and Keller has the puck. What's going on here? He fumbles it. And now we're going to be shorthanded in overtime. It was Cole Perfetti. He's gone off for interference and my X Factor looks to be activated. It's called dialed in and I need to be dialed in because we're in a, a shorthanded situation at four on three overtime now because the Coyotes get their extra man on the ice. Oh no, oh it's a two on one. Oh God, how do I play this? How do I play this? Okay, blocker save. That's some interesting sliding you're doing there, buddy. Gone through, wow, they're whipping it around. Hayton from the corner. No, 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 no. Which side? Oh, that was a weird one. Trickler all the way down. And Sider will take it out through center. That's a good play. Just get it in 200 feet away. And forecheck. Look at him. He's a defenseman, and he looks like a forward that knows what he's doing on the forecheck. He's been taught very well. Save. I don't know who took that shot, but the Coyotes are back away. Gunther splitting through the defense. Rouse back at the point down low. Michelli. yes, we needed that save. That's a good one. Oh, no. Was that Lawson Krause? I don't know who that... No, that was Barrett Hayton. Ross Colton. Protecting it in the corner. This is great. He's just killing time. Grinding away down there. Mangiapani. Save and a whistle by DeSmith. Are we back even now at 3-on-3 three three again? Yes, we're back at 3-on-3. Three three. Okay, big penalty kill. That was a successful one. I, I'm telling you, they're, they're going to get some sort of an odd man play. Gunther, but it's blocked before it could get to me. I'm going to just step off the post, play this, now hug the post, drop down, slide across, and the Jets should be out into the attacking zone now. Dvorak running out of time, so it's basically overtime, victory, or a shootout at this point for us. Uh-oh, hold on. Yeah. Hayden dumps it in? He really just dumped... Oh my god, he might know what he's doing. Save, we cannot let that in. He really dumped it in with five seconds to go in the overtime, but that save right there. Could be the most critical one that was made in the whole game. Oh, goodness. Shootout. And I am not a shootout specialist goaltender, but I have to turn into one for this because, okay, we got the broadcast view. I was not prepared for that. Oh, yeah! Kaprizov off the post and in. We're going to need our guys to score goals in the shootout because you, I, I'm going to tell you, me getting a shutout in the shootout, say that five times fast, is probably not going to happen. So who, oh yeah, Austin Matthews, oh God. Here we go. Oh, he did, he did, he faked me out. I really thought he was gonna go to the backhand. That was slightly deceiving. I had no idea what he was gonna do. You could not have predicted 
And with a player like Matthews, you've got to respect it. Perfetti. Oh, I respected the backhander also off the post and in, but the other post this time. It's going to be Keller. Is it is Keller? Oh, okay. I got a I got a plan for you, Keller. Let's see this. Let's Oh, okay. I was going to flying poke check. <laughs> I didn't need to. Did not need that. We don't even get a replay of that. They, nobody was impressed by that save. It's just textbook everyday stuff. Mangiapane wins it in the shootout. We get all three shooters in the shootout to score. And that leads us to victory. The extra point goes to your Winnipeg Jets. And I, victorious in the shootout. Yes, I gave up a goal to Austin Matthews, but nobody cares about that when you're picking up Ws. You have to be, you have to be kidding me. Plus one, plus one. I just won you a game in a shootout. Facing Matthews and, okay, I faced two shooters, Matthews and Keller. And sure, I got scored on by Austin Matthews. Who wouldn't? And, but I won the game with a 931 save percentage while Alex Lyon is in the hospital. Well, I don't, he, maybe he's not in the hospital. I don't know what's wrong with Lyon. But he's injured. And I just helped you get two points. A plus one? Really? If I win this game for you, Winnipeg, Alex Lyon better never drag his carcass back into that goal crease <laughs> for the rest of this season. Quinn Hughes has scored already. Sim the period. Oh, don't sim the period. Oh, we shouldn't have sim the period. This is bad. You know, you know, the only person that is a carcass in the goal crease is me right now. <laughs> I gave up how many goals in how many minutes. We didn't even get halfway through the period. And I gave up four straight. So what? what's the deal here? We, we saw in the last episode with the Florida game that I gave up five. Was it five goals? I think I gave up five goals or, or four goals or whatever it was in the simulation. I was able to intervene, and at the first stoppage in play, I was pulled out of the net. Now, let's sim the second period of play and just see what happens. 7-3, to three, but Kemper in the net for these ones. So, I was in the, in the net for... Was it four? We got to go back to the first period. I already forgot. I was in the net for four, right? Kemper's been in the net for three. What What is the leash on Kemper here? What What's the goal here? Can I intervene at all? Well, I made it back into the net somehow. I... I bribed the coach. I just, I bribed him. I said, listen, I have, I'm, oh. <laughs> the bribe is off the table. You know, I was going to blackmail the coach. I'm blackmailing him now. He put me back in the net, and then that happened. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, second time in the game that I've, I've been pulled twice in the same game. The Boo Birds are out in Winnipeg. It didn't, ma it didn't matter. Listen, it was a 7-3 game before I got pulled. You guys are not tying this one up. The only thing I can feel good about with that game against Vancouver is the simulation crapped all over me and Kemper. I mean, we both got screwed in that one. The whole team did. Okay, standings are... Oh, my goodness. Okay, it is the first day of April, so we played 72 games. We have a game in hand. But this is wild. Absolute, absolutely whack. The Blackhawks are within a point. So that's who we're fighting for the, the wild card. We still got games to be played against Chicago coming up, don't we? Uh, I got to look, look at the calendar. But we can do that in a moment. Then the Pacific Division. So there's... Hold on. Before I do that, one wild card is coming out of the Central. Then the other one in the Pacific... Right now, yeah, is Vancouver, who just put an, an absolute ass whooping up on us. And that's it. They've locked it up with 84 points. I think they're a playoff team guaranteed, even though it's not official yet. So 81 point, yeah. We have we got to just stay ahead of the Blackhawks. That's the main objective right now is just we got to win games. I mean, it's really as simple. The last 10 games we have to play this season, we got to win them. And would you look at that as well? My, The team that traded me to Winnipeg is the best team in the Central, and they have locked up a playoff spot, guaranteed. And right now, they're on course to win the President's Trophy. Glad I could help you out, Minnesota. Glad I could help you. Oh, you know, this is a problem. We just So there's the Vancouver game right there. I'll go up 
one month. There's the Vancouver 8-3 loss. We played Chicago the night before. We lost it. That's big. Two points there for Chicago. We have them coming up in the next game after this game against St. Louis. And we, we, just, we there's no excuses. We have got to win more than half of these games. We have to win more than half of the remaining 10 games on the season, but especially the head-to-head -head with Chicago. Finally, a return to my former home, St. Louis and the Blues. So first period, these are crucial games for the Winnipeg Jets right now as we have Colton Perico scoring on me. My former teammate scores on me in the game, but we get two on Jordan Bennington still here in St. Louis. Second period, four to three. They get three on me in this period, four total in the game. It's, now it's not looking so good for me. They haven't pulled me from this one until I give up another goal in this one inevitably. But this is my first start since I left St. Louis in St. Louis. And that's kind of wild to think about. It's been a couple of, you know, has it been a couple of seasons? How many, how long has it been since I last played for the Blues? This place will always be home to my goalie in NHL 24 anyway. As we won the Stanley Cup here back in season one. Of course, I, I had a large helping in that, didn't I? Now they're relying on Jordan Bennington and God knows whoever's here in the net for them. Oh, Yarn Crow's big save and a rebound to follow that one up. I'm just lucky that one of our players got to stick to it. That's a good try. Jordan Everly's here. There's a few new names. We needed Caprice off the score. He, oh, he ringed the post. We missed the net. We are just hailing everything toward Jordan, Jordan Bennington right now, but nothing's going in. And we got full pressure. Blues escape the full pressure scenario. Yarn Crow. All right, thank you for cleaning up the rebound. There was not there was not a necessity for me to do whatever I just did, but I didn't have to make a second save either. There we go, Mangiapane. He ties it up. Now the onus is on me. Do not give up a goal. We have got to start winning games, including this one. You're asking me to do a lot in the remaining 14 minutes and 35 seconds, especially with who knows what kind of chances St. Louis is going to get out of this game. Yeah, we're all right, we made a save on it. I really believe that that might go in for a moment. Perico, a floater from the point. We will do everything we can to keep it out. We have done so, so far. Here's a shot, save, rebound, bobbled up and in the air and cleaned up by Perfetti. I needed that help. Okay, this is not going to be easy by any means necessary. Jordan Bennington, what are you doing? Please do more of that. He almost gave us a free goal right there. He almost handed it right back to us. Kairou, we're in front of the puck anyway. We couldn't cover it. Manual saves are on. That's why my goaltender is not automatically covering the puck if that thought ever crossed somebody's mind. Please keep the puck down in the St. Louis end of the ice. It would make it a lot easier for me to do my job. My goaltender, when I do this butterfly push, he does not move fast enough to make a save on a backdoor one-time play. And you Can't you do like, yeah, you can do like a big power push. Okay, this is not the time to do a big power push. Ball Duke, centering. No, okay, save on the side of the net. We just kicked it away with our skate as well, which might have helped me out big time on that sequence. Ball Duke again. What is gonna go on here? Oh, no, 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 no. These turnovers, I was way too used to these type of turnovers when I played here in St. Louis. You can't be doing that here in a crucial game. Points are on the line. Big points are on the line. Stacking up the stress. More stress, than, more stress than I'll need for a whole season in this one game right now. I could bring it up, but I'm just going to shut my mouth about uh, regulation play being getting very low on regulation play because something wild might happen if I just open my mouth. The game is always listening. We could really use our offense to get a late one here. Bull Duke. Please no, please no. Cody Cece. Oh, that's a bad spot for a turnover. Neutral zone turnover. Everly driving it hard. Drops it off. Oh, no. That's where you just need to make a controlled rebound save. Get it with your glove because I'm pretty sure that I made the save with the glove. And it's the former Jet. Logan Stanley made a save. No, that's the problem with me. I didn't know where it was going to go, and I just did this desperation thing, and you see how that backfired. I knew, so I had a gut feeling something bad was going to happen late in regulation play, 
because this is Everly, right? Everly just drives it wide. Look at these guys. They're just chasing him the whole way down the ice. So he takes it to the corner. And I have to still respect Everly because, I mean, you never know what might happen here. We send it off. What is number six doing? I mean, where, where are you? We don't need two goaltenders, man. You don't even have appropriate equipment on to be a goaltender anyway. And he certainly didn't do your job. Made it more difficult for me. I push out top of the crease. This is not a good angle. I'm sorry. But I push out to the top of the crease. Stanley shot. Save. Or did it hit the post? It hit the post. I didn't even know that. It hit the post. Kicks back off my glove. Weird rebound. And then there's me doing whatever that is. And Stanley just out of midair, a soft little floater toward the net, and it's wide open for him. I mean, there's no, there's no bright side, there's no silver lining, but if there was a silver lining or a bright side, I gave up that goal with a... Well, okay, now there is definitely no silver lining. Way to go for tripping, Mangiapane. I was going to tell you, you know, there's a bright side. I gave up that goal with, like, more than two minutes to go in the game, which is just enough time that you can try to mount a comeback. But, oh, God, what a save. If you guys come back and tie this, remember that save. Just bookmark that moment in this game and because we're shorthanded the coaches don't pull you for the extra attacker when you're already shorthanded even though you're trailing by a goal late in the game you're offside bro we may have better luck if I pull myself out of the net and come down and try to score the extra attacker goal myself oh they're oh they're doing it they pulled me for the extra man I didn't think they would do it oh we got a scoop we got a scoop we got a scoop we got to go Everly okay get this off the screen the Blues have possession they're not going to keep the Blues from advancing this. Klingberg off the outside of the net, so it's not going to count. Still got time. This is your redemption arc here. Oh, God. 20 seconds. We're just playing with it in the neutral zone. Oh, boy. Right there. Pounce on that. Go. Kaprizov. Saved by Bennington. That's definitely the game. It's going to be into the empty net. Everly. <laughs> what an attempt. But their Blues are going to win. Everly, he doesn't miss that one. We full stop choked away two points tonight, and this game could have an impact on our standings in the playoffs and our chances of making it. Oh, yeah, we're not starting in the playoffs. Forget about it. I don't even care what happens to this team. Whatever. Just get me to the offseason already. Coach Sweat. <laughs> what? This, this isn't a laughing matter, I'm guessing. This last stretch of games has been awful watching from the bench. I am never worried about how the team plays. I have to take care of my own play first. Are you going to be the one to get the team back on the right track? Hey, listen, coach, don't sweat it. Oh, we lost 4-1 to one to Chicago. It's over for the team. They're not making the, we're not making the playoffs. But I get to play Anaheim. I get to see if my lady, lady friend is still there. All right now, Anaheim. And I'm just trying to roll out the last games of Season 4 as, as a Winnipeg Jet. And I've also learned that our coach's name, well, his last name, anyway, is Sweat. And I've given up four goals, and I am on the hot seat to get pulled again. So how many more games do I have as a Jet, do you think? I mean, when we're in the first week in April, so less than eight games to go in the season now. I think maybe one more start after this one against Anaheim. Oh! And is my friend still the coach in Anaheim or an assistant or whatever she is? Hello, beautiful. Look who is still in Anaheim. I, Anaheim, you better offer me a contract in the offseason. The lady over her shoulder is like, really? Really, Vince? <laughs> really? I don't want to let the, the, the assistant, whatever her job title is in Anaheim, distract me from the fact that I still have a job to do here. This is all about trying to put on a showing for potential suitors in the offseason. Oh, baby. Oh, Kyle Connor, former Winnipeg Jet. How many former Winnipeg Jets are going to score on me as I play for the Winnipeg Jets? I just could not get out of that spread eagle animation. That's a complaint that I seriously have this year is when you get stuck in an animation like this, there's no way to get out of it. Well, I've been pulled again. And Coach Sweat, he's going to really have it out with me. And look at that. Our own goaltender just scored on himself. You, you can't be mad at me. Who is in the net? Kemper? Kemper, what are you doing, bro? Look at this. He literally... I mean, even I haven't done that. 
Do you want to put me back in the goal crease? Maybe just have a thought. Maybe just just think about it. April 8th. Surely that's it for me, right? Coach Sweat. Oh, no, not Coach Sweat. Oh, no. Another disappointing loss in a disappointing stretch. Coach Sweat's just like, listen, son, there's no hope for you. Go, just go do a real normal job. This is just not meant for you.